How's it going guys? My name is Doe and I hope you're doing good. And in this video, I'll be covering a tier list for the weapons in Blaze Escalation because I think enough time has passed to where I can give a pretty decent assertion of the weapons and the, how they stand in a certain hierarchy. And I'll be going over the weapons and listing them, which ones are good to which ones aren't so good and explaining why for each weapon. Now, before doing that, I should explain that Blaze Escalation is mostly themed around attack speed and stagger damage. And the stagger damage amp is something called Lady Luck Barrage, which is pretty much the best amp in this escalation if you're playing a blunt weapon. To explain the amp, Lady Luck Barrage makes it so dealing stagger damage generates cannonballs, or a reserve of cannonballs, that fire every minute. And I think it takes around 750 stagger damage to make a cannonball, and they each deal around 500 damage per cannonball. And you can store a lot of freaking cannonballs, Milati, like a lot. I think the most I've ever had is around 150, and that, you know, multiply that out. I'm a calculator right now, I'm not going to do that kind of math in my head, you know, I, might, I might hurt myself. But if you multiply that out, that's a lot of freaking damage. Now there is a downside, which I'll just say real quick, and that is that the person aiming these cannonballs must be none other than freaking Steve Buscemi, because this guy cannot aim sometimes. Like, they're just missing all kinds of shots, so it's rough. But when they do land, it's insane. Anyway. Let's go ahead and jump into the best weapon in Blaze Escalation if you get some good RNG, which is going to be the Hammer, and that's because it does the most stagger damage. And as I said, stagger damage can be insane if you get lucky and get the Lalic Barrage Amp. Now, to make more use of this amplifier, what I suggest doing if you're trying to play a high risk, high reward sort of setup, you should bring plus six Knockout King, and if you're playing the Hammer, you should use the modifier Weighted Crown. And this makes it so stagger damage is no longer halved when attacking Behemoth Legs. And it goes further than just Behemoth Legs. It counts for Behemoth Arms, Legs, and if you're fighting Rezakiri, it counts for its freaking tail. So this is pretty big because you can't always hit the face, which is what you want to hit if you're playing a blunt weapon like the Hammer. And this makes it so you have a lot more options for fighting and a lot more leniency to build stagger damage, which is going to be important also. You should be bringing Stagger Tonic if you want to generate as many cannonballs as possible for funsies. Now, the second weapon in this list is going to be Strikers, and that's only because they are also a blunt weapon. If they weren't blunt weapons, they'd still be number two because they're pretty broken and the weapon needs to get nerfed, but what do I know? So, Strikers are number two on the list because they are absurdly strong still to this day, which is mind-boggling. I don't know why they're still so strong in this game, but they are number two for reasons that I shouldn't even have to name. They're just, they do a lot of damage, they have high mobility, all kinds of nonsense. And they're also a blunt weapon, which makes them deal more stagger damage than usual, and they can generate some pretty decent late like barrage stacks if they use the amplifier. But they won't be on par with the hammer because the hammer has that modifier with a crown to make it easier to do this same task. But regardless, strikers are still really high and they still do really freaking high damage. But moving on past this weapon, let's go ahead and talk about number three on the list, which is gonna be the Chain of the Braids. So Chain Blades are number three on the list, mostly because they do a pretty good amount of damage, and they're also as evasive as they've ever been in Dauntless in its escalation. And that's due to the fact that you get a modifier called Momentum Blades from Lady Luck. This modifier makes it so after using your special, your next special use within four seconds is free. So normally you only get four pips or four uses of your special. In this case, you'll get eight uses if you use them within a certain time limit. And that means you can use your Reaper's Dance a freaking ton. And a good portion of DPS on Chain Blades actually comes from Reaper's Dance if you're playing the Boris Chain Blades. Because you spam your special, build up stacks Reaper's Dance, and just unleash the nuke at 10 stacks, which in turn lets you deal some thick damage. And one last thing for this weapon, if you guys really want to, you don't have to use Iceborne, and you can instead change it out for, I guess, a plus 3 sturdy, and then swap in some Predator if you wanted to. I don't really suggest doing this for everyone, but Chain Blades are probably your best bet for doing a flawless run in Escalation, in Blaze Escalation. It's not very easy, but it's possible. So if you guys want a challenge, there's your challenge. Anywho, let's go ahead and move on to number four on the list, which is going to be the sword. I want to say axe, but I'm going to go ahead and say sword instead, just because the sword gets pretty huge benefits from the amps in escalation, mostly the attack speed ones. They don't really get much use out of stacker ones, so it's mostly on the attack speed side for this weapon. But the sword, nothing really changes in this escalation. You still rock the same old, same old. In this case, you slap on a Boreas sword, and that's a really, it's like the strongest Boreas weapon in the entire game hands down, so that's a pretty big bonus right there. But you also use Skullforge and you just spam the same attack, repeating elements, you just repeat that until there are no there are no more elements on the freaking earth and you call it a day. 
And the nice thing with this is that attack speed will increase how fast this will be cast. And attack speed can sometimes affect your attacks and make them sort of like, you know, attack too fast. It can mess you up. With repeating elements, this doesn't really happen that much because all you're doing is pressing the same button over and over again. And that's, it, you just call it a day. And other than that, Sword's pretty high on the list because it has Avenging Overdrive, which is basically a re repose or a reposta, whatever you want to call it. And that just means if you dodge an attack, or in this case, repose an attack, you'll deal damage and you won't take damage and it costs no stamina. And this just makes things like dual hunts a lot easier and less stressful because you can press your special button, Avenging Overdrive, and deal damage by dodging attacks. And also you get a, a, long, a lot of iframes. Like this is a very long lasting iframe or a long lasting iframes rather. And that just means you'll stay alive for longer. And that's pretty much the goal of escalation. Like you don't wanna be dying. That makes it a lot harder to do things like, I don't know, escalate, which is the whole point of the mode. Anywho, I digress. The next weapon on the list is gonna be number five. And on number five, we have the ax. And the ax is a great weapon in escalation. And it's not the best in other modes, but in Escalation, it truly shri shrines, shines. It truly shines. It truly glows and glistens because you can use things like Iceborne and not really be penalized. You're actually incentivized to use Iceborne, and this makes use of a mechanic called Resolve, which is normally the absolute worst mechanic in the entire game. Well, one of them at least, IMO. And what it does is it makes you not get knocked back, but you take full damage. And on some fights, some of y'all know that you can get one shot. So that's not a great time, but in Escalation, this doesn't happen very often, especially once you get your power boost to level 3, and you just take a lot less damage in Escalation, and also deal more damage. Now, there are some more ways the axe is good, and one of them is the fact that the axe is a weapon that performs a lot better in longer forms of combat. It has a modifier that is pretty much built for this exact thing. It's called Overcharged Cylinder. You get 25% additional damage from building your termination stacks, you get a, an additional determination level, and this makes you deal up to 75% more damage with the axe if you maintain your debt stacks throughout the escalation. If this sounds confusing, I will probably make an axe guy video in the future. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments because I want to make it, but I'm just being lazy and I, I need to stop doing that. Anywho, the axe is just a pretty weapon in escalation for these reasons. It's not the greatest, it's not the best at booping, it doesn't do the most damage but it really does hold its own in Escalation, and that's sort of why it's this, like, it's, it's kind of why it's at this point on the list. And also, the other two weapons I'm listing are just not in a good spot in the game, IMO. But let's go ahead and jump into one of them, which is number six on the list, and that's going to be the Pike. The War Pike, better known as a double-handed shake weight, or a two-handed pool noodle still does not perform very well in certain situations. Escalation is actually one of the ones where it does pretty well because it has a modifier that works in a similar way to the Axe's overcharged cylinder, and that's going to be execution, Executioner Spearhead. Words are hard. And that makes it so you get up to 60% extra damage if you generate 10 wounds. Or, you know, you get more damage from making wounds. The, the cap is 10, so it's 60% per wound. It's, it's simple math, all right? Anyway... Warpike falls short in other ways though, and that's mostly that the way it's special works just isn't very great, it's very time consuming to even use, and you lose damage for using your special. Like, storing your special takes away 20%, up to 20% rather, of your attack damage. That is, like, why? No other weapons like that, no weapons like, yo bro, use your special, alright, go ahead and pay your taxes your damage taxes, like what is going, like why? Why is it that a weapon that doesn't have good specials is also being penalized for even using its specials in the first place? Like, you're not, you just, you can't get ahead. And I will say, Warpike is still viable. It's not like a trash weapon, like nothing's trash and Dauntless, except for, you know, Hunger, God Hand, Molten Edict. Everything else is great. Hopefully that sheds some light on why the Warpike isn't that great in Escalation. I will also add that Warpikes don't have the best interrupting capabilities. So uh, that is a pretty big bummer, and they also have some stamina issues. Not as bad as it used to be, but still not great. Anywho, it is time for weapon number seven on this tier list, which goes to no other weapon than the Ostian Repeaters, aka the Ostian Yaeaters. And this weapon has been the lowest, I think, on all my tier lists so far. It's going freaking 0 and 2. It is not looking good for the weapon, but to explain why it's low on the list would take an entire video. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a couple of words. It doesn't do the best in dual hunts. It can't really boop that well at all. Like, it can boop, but it's not very good. It's just not a good interrupts. 
And other than that, man, it doesn't do really well in dual hunts because, like I said, you can't boop that well, which is a big factor in dual hunts, and you don't have great access to AoE damage that's meaningful. Like, I guess you can get use out of full board chamber and maybe ballistic chamber to a degree, but it's nowhere near like playing a sword and cleaving behemoths with your, with your basic attacks. You can't do that in repeaters. And I'm not sure how to fix that. But the other thing I want to bring up is that repeaters just don't have access to cells like other weapons do. Repeaters are stuck with a mobility cell, and you also don't get a cell or a stat on the weapon, which makes it just really hard to make builds that have a lot of perks that other weapons have access to freely. So for those reasons, the repeaters are the worst weapon in Escalation, and that pretty much concludes the tier list. I won't really list the uh, exotics because in this Escalation, they, there's nothing that makes them unique, like nothing makes them stand out. In Shock Escalation, you had Twin Suns and Crit, that was insanely fun. In this Escalation, there's nothing like that whatsoever. So they're not on the list for that reason. But this is a tier list that was comprised of playing weapons solo and in a group. Weapons that I think are high on the list are ones that are really fun, really strong, and just enjoyable, like whether you're playing by yourself or with other people, whether they're friends or randoms in pubs. And I think that's important. Like it's a really good design for weapons, and it's really good to keep that in mind because weapons are going to get reworked sometime soon, and I'm just curious to see if the, it'll keep that way, right? Like I'm curious to see how this list will change in the future. But anyway, y'all, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, hit the like button, and if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the comments. And also, if you want to support the channel and what I do here, use my Epic Games support credit code in the Epic Games store or in the in-game dollar store when buying things. It supports me a great deal. The code is just Odo. It's my name. And I appreciate all the folks who do that. And I appreciate all the folks who watch this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.